What is going on, everybody? It is Friday, February 9th. <sighs> a rough one last night. We've got nine games tonight, and there's all sorts of weird stuff going on because of the trade deadline. Um, if you were a part of the live stream, you already know that uh, I had Russ in the big uh, $500 single entry on... Um, on FanDuel, you probably don't know how bad it really is. Well, I mean, you might if you checked out my team. Um, so I had 294 without Russ. Um, lineup was looking great uh, in the early section. I had uh, Fournier, Augustin, um, Beasley, and Kylo Quinn going in the early slate, and they had like 130-something combined where I needed 100. So I, I got to the, the late games uh, looking pretty solid. Um, and then the news came out that Russ was going to be out, which was, you know, obviously a risk. But uh, only one person in the tournament ahead of me had Russ. Um, so I would have needed like 47 or 48, somewhere in that neighborhood, whatever that math is, uh, to finish second if Russ played. And I would have needed, uh, what's that, 27 and 7, like 31 from Russ to finish in the money. So it's frustrating. Uh, it's real frustrating. I think I had a pretty decent lineup. You know, Augustin, relatively low owned, actually, only 29.5%. Um, you know, he got 10x. That's the exceptional play there. Uh Wesley Matthews was fine. I wish he would have been Dirk. Uh, Fournier was fine. Um, Paul George, super solid, 68% owned. Um, you kind of had to play him last night if you knew. Like, I liked him whether Russ played or not, but if Russ wasn't going to play, like, you would obviously want to have Paul George. Uh, Beasley went ham early. Once that game got out of hand late, uh, him and O'Quinn sat. They had potential to even have bigger nights than that, but still super happy. I was super, I was, like, I was real nervous about Beasley just because of Toronto's defense. And that sort of bared out in that the Knicks had 88 points, but Beasley was able to get his, luckily. So, uh, super happy with Draymond, happy with Kuzma, happy with O'Quinn. Uh, I'm I'm really happy with my lineup. We rolled the dice on Russ, and we got burned. You know that's that's part of it. Uh, I just see, you know, Russ putting up 50, and slotting into this second slot right here, and taking back four G's. Oh, it's kind of a bummer, but what are you gonna do? Let's get into this. So uh, first up, oh and. Someone mentioned moving my head to this side of the screen. I assume I'm pointing the right way, but I don't know. Um, to the opposite side, because there's usually more crap over here. So I'm over here now. Let me know if that's a problem. Uh, Pistons and Clippers. Uh, Pistons are 3.5-point favorites at home. Uh, they have got a 110.25 implied total, which is fourth. I didn't sort this yet. Sort and collapse. And collapse. Okay. So Minnesota, Houston, Atlanta, Cleveland, Detroit, Philly, Portland. Okay. All right. So first up, Drummond. 11-2 on FanDuel. Ugh, that's the worst. 11-2 on FanDuel, 10-2 on DK. Not a bad spot for him, but... Man, I'm just so nervous of that price. I, I need to get over it, though. 66, 53, 66, 72. Um, Drum is just playing better. And um, I think a lot of that, I mean, you know, a lot of what I just read off was not necessarily from uh, from Blake. Some of those games were before Blake. But I think I read a stat that, like, Blake has more assists to Drummond in however many games they've played together, or whatever, the handful. More assists to Drummond than uh, Tobias Harris did. Let's see if that's true. Um, 
Oh, this says six, and Tobias Harris says 47, so maybe that's wrong. I don't know. Thought I saw something along those lines. Either way, I'm okay with Drummond tonight. Uh, he's just a three for me. I should probably be um, a little bit more on him. I feel like his price is too high in a similar way that Dwight's price got to when he got on that heater. Like, I think that he should probably just be in like the 10 to range on FanDuel. So take that for what it's worth. Still looks like a good play. Like it's not a bad matchup or anything. Um, DeAndre's not exactly tearing it up for center defense. Blake Griffin against the Clippers. Which I guess would be interesting if like half of the Clippers team wasn't different at this point. But it's not like he's going back up against Chris and Redick and Jamal Crawford. Like it's a bunch of dudes that aren't as interesting. 9,200 on FanDuel, 9,100 on DK. Um, I mean, I've liked Blake most of the nights that he's played so far. He's been, you know, super solid in between 37 and 49. You know, you're looking for 45. Uh, I feel like he's played a lot of home games. Um, I'm going to say that he's a three as well. Uh... Just because it's not like it's the crazy best game in the world. There are there are other games and options and tons of value out there, but I could definitely see having Blake as one of my uh, power forwards tonight with the value that's out on the board since of all the trades and stuff. Stanley Johnson, 6,100 on FanDuel, 5,100 on DK. You need 30. Um, he's done that three times in the past two weeks, which is kind of crazy to me, but... Three out of the four games with Blake, he's put up low 20s. Um, I'm not a huge fan of him. I'm going to say that he is just a four. And he's probably a little bit better of a play on DK. I don't think that I could get there on FanDuel. Reggie Bullock, 4,600 and 4,500. Uh, you know, 23. He can get there if he gets hot. Um, I'm going to say that he's also a four. And then Ish is probably the last guy that I would look at. I don't know, Ish or Tolliver, I guess. So Ish is 6,100 on FanDuel, 5,700 on um, on DK. I have some interest in Ish. You're looking for 30, put up 29 in this last one. Has had, uh, had a 42-pointer with Blake, a 30-pointer with Blake. Um, I'm going to say that Ish is a 3 for me. And then Anthony Tolliver, 4,300 and 4,100. You need just over 20. <clears throat> um, yeah, I'm going to pass now that Blake is there. So we'll go to the Clippers. Well, those numbers aren't even remotely close to right. What did I paste there? Let's try to figure that out. Uh, Clippers. Yeah, that's a different table altogether. Let's try that out. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. So first up for the clips, um, 106.75 implied total, which is ninth. Lou Will. Uh, I'm going to have to check this out because that seems like a error in pricing, but maybe I'm wrong. 6,800. Okay, so Lou Will is 6,800 on FanDuel, 7,600 on DK. Um, he's... That's uh, exceptional. You need uh, 34 for him to hit value. Um, yeah, Lou Will is a FanDuel 1 for me. Almost assuredly will be in my lineup, barring any uh, weird news. And um, on DK, that is not the best. Uh, but I still like him. So I'm going to say that he's a 3 on DK. But 
6,800 on FanDuel is ludicrous. I mean, I understand that they just got Tobias Harris and Avery Bradley, but neither of those guys are like crazy usage guys, and they shipped out Blake, who, you know, is still taking up a ton of shots. So, uh, I mean, even if he's like slightly muted, Lou, 6,800 is certainly worth the flyer if he gets hot. And you have to assume uh, the Pistons aren't necessarily as good defensively, so. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, Gallo, 6,700 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. Um, where are we at here? Bang. I don't necessarily like that. Has he been any good this year? That's the Pistons. Clippers. Why is that showing like that? Was it just not refreshed? Yeah, that was just not refreshed. Um, yeah, I don't have a ton of interest in Gallo at that price. You're looking for like 33. Uh, he's done it in the last two, so maybe I'm just crazy. But um, he's just a four for me. Tobias Harris. Same scenario. Um, he has been okay. I'm probably a little low on him. But even still, at that price, I'm not I'm not I'm not crazily interested in him. And uh, Austin Rivers might be back, so it'll be interesting to see how he gets. Uh, Merged into the lineups. Tobias Harris also just a four. Now DeAndre at seventy six hundred. Oh god, I can't wait to play Lou Will tonight. DeAndre at seventy six hundred or seven thousand on DK. You'd be looking for thirty eight. Um, not really been there lately. I don't necessarily love the matchup. He's also just going to be a four. There's not a ton to like here on this Clippers squad. There's just too many, too many new parts, too many existing parts, and I don't necessarily know how they're all going to merge together. Avery Bradley at 4,600. He would need 23. He had 26 in the last one. Um, he's probably like the only part of this that I have any real interest in outside of Lou. Uh, yeah, Andre Bradley. Like <laughs> every day is something new. Oh uh, man, Taya Dosage forty six hundred and forty eight hundred. I'm not interested there. Austin Rivers, no thanks. So let's go to Philly. Uh, Sixers one thirteen point five implied total is first on the entire slate, at least for right now. Um, all but two of the lines were legitimate. Uh, Pelicans are five and a half point underdogs in Philly. This could be a interesting game. Philly, where are the Pels? Eh, yeah. Philly's D has been nasty lately. Am I right? <laughs> I think it's been real nasty lately. I need to look that up just so I know that that's not a glitch in the system. Uh, I should have bookmarked this. Discussion. Dates. Date filter. Nope, that's not the one I want. That's the one I want. Uh, that'll actually work. So let's say Phillies D since the beginning of the year to eight eighteen. Yeah, they've been really good. They've been seventh. If I make that middle of January, is it even better? Still seventh. Okay. So Philly's D has been good. Good to know. First up, Ben Simmons. Um, Simmons is 8,700 on FanDuel, 8,500 on DK. 
So we're looking 43. Should be a really good matchup for him. Who would guard him? Miritich? Miritich can't guard him, so who's the three? Uh, so it'll be like Darius Miller types. Okay, I guess. Have they played at all? I don't know what's going on. Did I click on the wrong game here for Fandle? I must have. Yeah, maybe I did. Let's update that just in case. Whoa, that's an interesting screen. I like this uh, new look I've got going with the awful uh, looks like it's going to crash screen. Oh. All right, let's try this again. So Ben Simmons, I kind of like Ben Simmons tonight. Needs to get to 43, which he's not really done, but he's been right at that level. I just think it's a good matchup. Uh, call it a three. Dario Saric, 7,100 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. Uh, ben Simmons is a four on DraftKings, by the way. That's a terrible price. Um, Saric and Embiid. Saric. 7,100. Needs 35. Yeah, that's that one's not for me. He's just a four. I can't imagine him popping up much. Now Embiid. 10-4 on FanDuel. 9-8 on DK. Now, let's double check and see if have they played at all. Not who the hell cares. They probably had Boogie. Yeah. Simmons went for 46 in that one. I feel like Embiid sat that game for some reason. Yeah, he did. Look at that. What a memory. Uh, I like Embiid here. Needs 52. Um, had 53 in his last game. I just feel like this is a really good spot. Imagine a Mecca Okafor being out of the league for like four years and then Joel Embiid comes down and he's just like doing Joel Embiid shit. He's a three. I can't get too crazy for him. But there's some upside in that number. Bobby Covington, 5,700 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DK. Um, you know, 30. I'm, he's been so up and down. Just not shooting the ball like you would want him to. Um, he's a four for me. That's just kind of like the small forward is awful issue. And then I'd be fine with going JJ um, as a four. 5,400 on FanDuel, 5,200 on DK. You're looking for 27, which is high for him, but Pels do give up a bunch of three opportunities. Pelicans now, um, 108 implied total is 7th, so we're looking at Anthony Davis at 11-7, 11-1 on DK. It's a pretty tasty matchup for him. But needs 60, we'll say. <sighs> Philly just been so good as a team defensively lately. I don't think that AD is going to be my spot. It's a four. Can't imagine playing him on DK either. Drew, 7,600 on FanDuel, 7,800 on DK. Uh, he needs 38. A, a big fan of Drew tonight. He's a three. Probably more like a two and a half on FanDuel. And he's a four on DK. It's a terrible price on DraftKings. Miritich, 7,000 on FanDuel. Uh, 6,800 on DraftKings. Uh, he's a two. Straight across the board. 
and um, you can make a really realistic case that he's a one on FanDuel, but I want to temper it just because he's only played two games with the team. Right now, I would expect Lou Will and Miritich to be in, uh, in my lineup tonight. Eton Moore, 4,500 on FanDuel, 4,400 on DK. Um, 22. Gets there from time to time. Um, can't ignore him. Just a four. Nothing, nothing interesting. No interest in Rondo or really anybody else. Go to Atlanta. Should be an interesting game because uh, Cleveland's a morgue tonight, at least so far, and Atlanta's just bad. So uh, Hawks, I have the Hawks as one point underdogs um, at home against the Cavs. That line might move uh, a little bit further towards Cleveland. They're just missing so many guys that I don't know how that's going to shake out. Um, Schroeder, seventy seven hundred on Fanduel, seven thousand on DK. I think Atlanta is probably like the third best team to look at tonight. You would expect Schroeder to be able to roast whatever is going on at point guard for uh, the Cavs tonight. He needs just under 40, which is a pretty tall order for him. If he were a better shooter, it would be different. But he kind of uh, runs analog to what the Cavs give up. I'd say Schroeder's just a four. There's going to be better things on the squad. Like Torian Prince, for instance. 4,500 on FanDuel, 4,900 on DK. Um, you're looking for 23 out of him. Put up 28 last night. Uh, had a 50-point game earlier. Uh, he's, a, he's a three for me. Kent Bazemore, 6,400 on FanDuel, 6,000 on DK. Needing 32. Hasn't done it in his last few games. But I'll entertain him as a four. And then Tyler Dorsey, uh, I've got him at 23 minutes, uh, 3,600 on FanDuel, 3,600 on DK. Um, also going to be a three if you're looking for a punt play, but there should be enough value out there that he's not necessarily necessary. Necessarily necessary. That's just... Sometimes I say real dumb shit. And then you get into Deadman and Collins. I don't really have much interest in Deadman, but because it's the Cavs, you can't just ignore it. He was bombing threes last night while I was watching the game. Two for eight, I think. Missed the last one as an air ball to try to tie the game. It was bad. It was real bad. Um, Collins was hyper-efficient again. 30 points in 26 minutes. Uh, he's played 26 minutes in his last two. I've only got him for 22 tonight. But if he's playing 26 minutes, uh, he's in a pretty good spot. Um, I'm going to say Collins is a three. You want some part of Atlanta tonight because Cleveland is a train wreck on D and also missing a ton of dudes. Like, do I really have Rodney Hood in? Because I don't think that I should. Or George Hill. That's not supposed to have happened. Did I forget to delete their minutes? I did. Whoops. And whoops. There we go. I forgot to delete the minutes. Let's save that just in case. Okay, that looks better. So, Cavs, I have them at 109 implied total, which would be fifth. Um, they'd be the fourth best matchup. So, this game is probably the game to stack, in my opinion. Um, first up is Braun. 11-5 uh, on FanDuel. 12-1 on DK, which is absolutely insane. But you need 50... Seven, so we'll call it 60 from LeBron. Um, I mean, the eight guys that you see here are projected for 236 minutes, so they're running short. Everything looks kind of good here. Uh, I would guess that LeBron will be hella chalky, although Jimmy Butler will be out there. Um, Giannis will be out there. 
probably it for high quality threes unless I'm missing someone obvious now so um, you can get to someone else at that point and use more of the calves for value I'm gonna say that Braun is just a three particularly on DK um, does he historically roast uh, Atlanta he, he does kind of um, I'm going to say that he's a 3 on DK and a 2 on FanDuel. It's hard to not like him. I, there is not a lot of shot creation here. Like, at all. So, he's he's going to have to do a lot tonight. Or, you know, he sits and just says, fuck it, for a night. Or we get news that, you know, some of these other guys are going to play. But for right now, they're not in. Uh, Jeff Green, if this game goes the way that I'm anticipating right now, um, he should play 33 minutes at 3,900 on FanDuel. Uh, Jeff Green's kind of a one tonight. Um, and by kind of, I mean an absolute one. Um, I'm fine with that on DK as well. Uh, Tristan Thompson is 4,700 on FanDuel, 5,000 on DK. Uh, I'm going to say that he's a two. This is wild. Jose Calderon, 4,500 on FanDuel, 3,200 on DK. Man, oh man. Um, look, I don't, I don't love Calderon because he's not, like, spectacularly good at doing anything. Um, but if you're looking for a punt play on DK, 3,200, um, He's going to play 30 minutes, or at least he should. Uh, he's a 2 on DK. Um, I wouldn't even touch him on FanDuel, oddly enough. Kyle Korver is 3,600 on FanDuel, 3,800 on DK. Again, should play a ton of minutes, have the opportunity to, you know, get up as many shots as he can get. Um... If they're, like, you know, you would think LeBron is going to try to get to the rack as much as he can... If he does do that, they're either going to help off of him and have Corver and JR and maybe Jeff Green spotting out um, Calderon too, Chetty. A lot of options. Uh, I mean, Corver's probably a two. Uh, he's a three. He, he doesn't do enough. He's not going to fill that stat sheet with anything else. So you're banking on a, a shooting tear jr's price is normal so i'm not really interested but i will list him uh just because of the game he's a four and if you want to get weird and go for chetty at minimum salary i think that uh i don't know why i'm typing it like i say it um i think he's a three did i type that in the wrong set yes i did this is the game to pay attention to the most if no news comes out and this looks you know similar to what i'm doing uh you know, you need to have a ton of Cleveland. It's just a, it's just how it is. Boston, 104.25 implied total is 13th. They are hosting the Pacers, and they are four-point favorites at home. Not a ton to pay attention to here. Um, not really a great matchup. You know, low implied total. All of their prices are generally where they're supposed to be. Um so I'd say that Al Horford is a three. Uh, I think the matchup looks pretty good for him. Um, Pacers limit or give up a ton of threes. So, you know, Horford does like to shoot for a big man. Kyrie at 8,000. I actually like that. Um, just a three, though. It's hard to uh, get too crazy for it. Do the old uh, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, both fours. Um, Greg Monroe at minimum salary on FanDuel is kind of interesting, but it's really hard to go down that path. I just I don't really have any interest in anything on Boston, so we'll go to Indiana. Pacers. 100 point implied total is 17th. Um, 
Boston exceptional defensively. Real difficult game for them. Um, Oladipo is 9,700 on FanDuel, 8,000 on DK. You're looking for 50 from him on FanDuel, which is a tall order. He has done it once. Um, and you need you want to keep an eye out to make sure that he is playing. But I, I wouldn't. Oh, not yet. Oh, God, I forgot they were involved in the leak game. I was like, oh, I wonder why he didn't play. But I know, you know, he was out a couple days ago, would have played against the Pacers, or would have played against the Pelicans, but Smoothie King Center was leaking smoothies. Um, I don't really have a ton of interest in Victor Oladipo, um, but he's in play on DraftKings, in my opinion, as a three. Corey Joseph, 4,900 on FanDuel, uh, 4,400 on DK. He's just, he's so passive. He's a four just because um, of minutes, but I'm not really interested in it. Thad Young, though, uh, 5,400 would be 27 for value. Um, you know, does have the ability to get up into the 30s if you're looking for a value uh, four, and he is a four for me. Miles Turner, 6,500 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DK. I'm hoping that having a couple days off was helpful for him. You know, he's had some soreness in the knee. Um, he's a three on both sites for me. I like him a lot. And if he can get those 30 minutes, you know, he's a good young player. People are kind of sleeping on. Last up for me would be Lance. Lance Stevenson is 5,600 on FanDuel, 5,200 on DK. Um, not that I'm seeking him out, but he's a four. Bulls, 105.25 implied total is 11th. Uh, they are six and a half point underdogs at home against the Wolves. Um, and expectation is that Markinen is playing. Justin Holiday is 5,300 on FanDuel, 5,000 on DK. So you're looking for like 26. Uh, he's been all over the place, 13, 27, 30. Uh, not the best matchup either. I'm going to say that he's a four because he does like to take corner threes, and I think that could be a benefit to him in this game. Uh, Jerry and Grant, 5,200 on FanDuel, 5,000 on DK, uh, needs 26, pretty consistently in the 20s. Um, not a bad cash play tonight. I'm going to say that he's a 3. Markin in 6,400 or 6,700. Hasn't played in a couple games. Um, needs 30. I don't really like this matchup for him. Um, they play it all this year. Nope. He's a four. I can't get too crazy. And then Levine, 7,200 on FanDuel, 6,100 on DK. I definitely like Levine more on DK. You're looking for 35. Um, he's basically been right there in his last three. Uh, revenge game against the Wolves. Um, I'm going to say Levine is a three. But, um, you know, Minnesota is... I don't know why I'm saying Minnesota. I'm looking at it wrong. Chicago is... Um, let's see... 14th in my little like how good is this matchup look ranking so don't want to get too crazy Bobby Portis 6200 on FanDuel 5700 on DK he would need 30 um, I don't have any problems with Portis just a three though again it's a matchup thing now, Minnesota on the other hand it's the best matchup on the board uh, should play at a little bit higher of a pace. Great implied total. Uh, Chicago's defense is atrocious. Um, 
this is going to be a place where I focus. I'd like to have at least one, if not two guys from Minnesota. Um, first up is going to be Jimmy Butler, 9,800 on FanDuel, 9,600 on DK. Um, so we're looking for 50. He had 50 his last time out, 50 in the game before that. Uh, the Bulls do like to take away the mid-range game. Um but I don't really think that um, this is going to be too difficult for them. Butler, obviously, uh, going back to Chicago for the first time, so that narrative is in play. I'm going to say that Jimmy Butler is a two. Just like it a lot. Um, Andrew Wiggins is 6,200 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DraftKings. Uh, he's just a three for me. Looks fine, just I don't want to go too crazy on him. Yeah. Uh, Towns, 9,400 on FanDuel, 9,300 on DK. You're looking for 47 or so. Uh, had 49 this last time out. Um, it's been playing a little bit better lately. Uh, I like Towns a good bit here. I'm going to say that he's a two as well. I really like this Minnesota game. I might adjust these tiers a little bit, but my outlook on the game is going to be some combination of two of the five uh, Wolves starters. I do want to dig into it a little bit further. We got Taj Gibson and Jeff Green. Yeah, Jeff Green. Jeff Teague. Taj is 5,800 on FanDuel, 5,700 on DraftKings. Um, needs 30. Not super in love with Taj here. So I'm going to say that he's a... I was going to say 4, but he's a 3 just because of the matchup. And Teague, 6,100, needs 30. I had 42 in the last one. I actually had him for that. Um, and I think that he's in a good spot again. Especially with no Chris Dunn revenge game possibility so Teague is a three but right now I think I'd pr prioritize Butler and Towns although I don't know if I could get to both of them so it might be one plus you know Teague uh, Houston now Rockets 113 implied total is second um, they are eight point favorites at home against the Nuggets this line is not out and right now I'm assuming that Gordon and Ryan Anderson both play still no Trevor Ariza uh, Houston has a very good matchup. Uh, Denver's defense has been not very good lately. Where are they in that chart? Oh, that actually, yep, 26th. 26th in the past two months, so. And that's just team defense, but something to pay attention to. So James Harden is 11-8 on FanDuel, 11-2 on DraftKings. Um... I don't really love this matchup for Harden, and at that price, I would like I really need to love it. Have they played at all this year? They have, and it didn't go super well. Yeah, he's just a four. I'm, I'm, I don't think that this is the spot where I want to pay up for a stud. Um, Chris Paul, 9,900 and 9,500. So we're looking for 50 out of Paul. I mean, he can do it. Um, last two games have been in the mid-40s. Uh, Chris Paul's 9,900 and 9,500. Again, I don't, I'm not like married to it. I don't, I'm having trouble getting there. Mba Mute, 4,400, needs 22. Um, he's been right in that range lately. I like him the most out of anything here, just as like a filler. I can't, I don't, wouldn't expect to have him, but it's fine. 5,500 for Eric Gordon on FanDuel, 5,800 on DraftKings. Uh, coming off, you know, missing three out of the last four games, sort of four out of the last five. I'm not even remotely looking at that. Clint Capella, though, 8,100 on FanDuel, 6,900 on DK. Uh, needs 40. He's had 40, he had 46, 48, 41, three of the games in the past two weeks. Uh, 
So be hard to say no to that. I'm going to say that he's a three. No interest in Tucker or Ryan Anderson. Just not a big fan of that. those prices. I'll probably have to dig into it a little bit further. Denver. Um, Denver with a 105 implied total, which would be 12th. We've got Will Barton at 7,400 on FanDuel, 6,400 on DraftKings, 38, or 37 rather. Uh, he's been there in the last two. I don't think there's a ton of upside in that number, but he does feel pretty good for like a cash play. Um, I'll say that he's a three. Gary Harris, 6,500 and 6,200, so you're looking 32. Um, again, like he's that's fine. None of this is awe inspiring. Denver is towards the bottom of the pack. Jamal Murray, 6,700 and 6,300. I, I don't like this at all for Murray, but he needs 33 on FanDuel. Um, Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure I like Murray. Jokic, 9,900 on FanDuel, 8,900 on DK. So we're looking for 50 out of him. Um, he's only done that once, a couple 47 and 48 point games, but the time that he did do it was going for 72. Doesn't feel like a situation where he's going to, you know, go off. So I'm going to say he's a four. Only guy I'm interested in, I wish that I wasn't, but Wilson Chandler is minimum salary on FanDuel, 3,500. Um, he's a four just because of that minimum salary, but he has been uh, a very bad basketball player this year. If I look at this and see, yeah, so bad. Weighted points would be 18. It's just something to entertain as a guy, minimum salary, that... Um, is going to, or should play, you know, a decent amount of time. Minutes have been cut lately, so be aware of that, but we'll see what that actually means. In a game against uh, Houston, I could see him being on the court a little bit more. Trey Lyles, 5,605,000. Uh, you know, 28 is a pretty high number for him. He can get there. Uh, I'm going to say that he's just a four. Miami now. Uh, the Heat, 100.25 implied total is 17th. Um, this game is the worst game on the slate from a uh, like playability standpoint. So something to keep in mind. Uh, no Kelly Olynyk, or at least not expected to have Kelly Olynyk for the Heat. So that'll be the one place where any value opens up here. We've got Josh Richardson, 7,000 on FanDuel, which I'm not really interested in, in a high level, 6,200 on DK. Um, he's a four, but I just hate this matchup. Same for Dragic, 7,200 and 7,200. He needs 36. Um, it's done in two of the last three, but again, I don't. This game is not set up to be uh, lush with fantasy points. But Noah Linick means a lot of more minutes for James Johnson, who at 4,600 on FanDuel, 5,100 on DK. Uh, exceptional play on FanDuel. Hasn't been playing super well. You know, has games like 13 fantasy points in 36 minutes. But uh, on paper at 4,600, Exceptional play. Uh, he's a two for me on FanDuel. And a three for me on DraftKings. Uh, no real interest in Wayne coming back. Um, especially the way Milwaukee defends the three. I would I would take a look at Bam. He's uh, 4,500 on FanDuel, 4,700 on DK. Um... I'm just going to say a straight three for me. Also, hold on one second. Okay, I'm back. Whew. Yeah, uh, I think Bam is the only other playable guy here. I'm trying to get back into my flow of whatever the hell I was looking at. 
Don't really have any interest in Whiteside. I wish I did, although he did close the last game um, and played 33 minutes, so I've got him in for 25 now. Might be low, but, you know, 33 is really the only time that he has gone up in minutes. Um, I'm going to keep an eye on it. I'm going to say that he's a four for right now. If I can get any... If I can find out that he's going to play a couple extra minutes, uh, he becomes super interesting. And he's just a four on FanDuel. Uh, that's a terrible price on DK. Bucks. Ooh, 98.75 implied total. Dead last on the slate. Um, they're dead last in uh, what I would say would be a good matchup. Miami exceptional on D. Uh, I don't even know if I need to look at this. I can't imagine playing Giannis over LeBron or Jimmy Butler. Uh, I'm not even going to list him, to be perfectly honest. I'm not interested in Giannis. No, that's, that would be silly. I'm not totally not interested in him. He's still Giannis. Dante Tukumbo, four. But I prefer LeBron and Jimmy Butler at that position. Chris Middleton, 7,300. On FanDuel, 6,900 on DK. Um, Unine, 36. I'm not super enthused. I don't really have any interest in Eric Bledsoe. I don't have any interest in Tony Snell. John Henson, 5,800 on FanDuel, 5,400 on DK. That would probably be the only spot where I would entertain anything. Also just a four. And, you know, Jabari at 4,000. I'd be willing to say is a four as well. But this is just a terrible game. I, I, I don't want to focus on it. Uh, to the Jazz, neither of these last two games are particularly interesting. Jazz are uh, 106.25 implied total. That's 10th on the slate. They're uh, five and a half point favorites against the Hornets. Uh, Hornets on the back-to-back, -back, uh, playing on the road in the second half of it. Got to watch out for that Utah nightlife, too. So, not a huge fan of uh, Charlotte tonight. Donovan Mitchell, 7,500 on FanDuel and 6,900 on DK. Uh, not been playing particularly well in the last two. Um, so, I'm not super married to the idea of having him, but he is a four for me. Joe Ingles at 4,700, 5,100 on DK. A 4,700 is not bad. You know, 24, 25 for value. Um, has the ability to get there. You know, put up 30, what was it, 36 a couple nights ago. It's not the best game, but again, he's a 4. Actually, he's a 3 on FanDuel. He's probably going to pop up a lot when I optimize. Ricky Rubio, 8,000 on FanDuel, which I just can't justify paying, even though he's put up 40 and four of his last five. Uh, 7,100 on DK. I, I'm not even looking at him, it, so it's not super important. Uh, a really good matchup shooting, though. He's a four. I won't ever have him, but he's a four. If somebody wanted to talk themselves into it, I would need to see the lineup first. Rudy Gobert, 7,700, 6,800 on DK. You know, just under 40 for Gobert. Hasn't really been there. Doesn't really feel like the spot for him. Again, just a four, mostly because of uh, price. Favors, 5,500, 5,200 on DK. Surprised he's still on the team, but needs 27. Been in the mid 20s. Um, fairly recently. While I do like the price, I just don't like him with Gobert. Uh, he is a three for me though on FanDuel just because of that price. Four for me on DraftKings. And I don't really have any interest in Royce O'Neal or Burks. Charlotte is uh, 100.75 implied total which is 15th. Uh, very poor matchup for them. Kemba with a big one last night. Uh, 40 legit points. 54 fantasy points. Second 54-point game in February. 
needs 40. Um, I just don't like this game on the back-to-back. -back. But if I liked anything in here, it would be Kemba. I'm going to say that he's a 3. But back-to-back -back on the road in Utah, uh, that feels like a tough spot. Batum is 6,200, 6,500 on DK. You know, you're looking 31. He's been playing a lot better as of late. 40, 43, 36, 30. Um, I'll also say that he's a 3. I'm going to have a hard time getting to someone from Charlotte, but I can't rule it out in, entirely. Dwight is 8,200. That would be 41. Uh, has not been playing well as of late. Lots of games in the 20s. Did have a big 54-point outburst a couple nights ago. Um, Dwight is just not somebody I'm looking at. MKG, 4,200 on both. Um, you know, he's a guy that every once in a while goes off. I don't know why I'm spelling his name with an equal sign instead of a hyphen, but, you know, here we are. Marvin Williams, 4,200. That's probably something I could entertain. Also, just a four. I don't really have any interest in the game. Let's go to the Kings. Kings, 101.25 implied total is 14th. Um, they are hosting the Blazers and are six-point underdogs at home. Uh, not too much to look at here. Only going to really pay attention to the top three guys and then maybe Zebo. So Bogdan... 5,600 on FanDuel, 4,900 on DraftKings. You're looking for 28 out of him. Uh, it's been in the 30s twice. He's just a GPP guy, but I'll say he's a three. Uh, De'Aaron Fox, 5,400 on FanDuel, 6,000 on DK. So unplayable on DK as far as I'm concerned, but needs 27 on FanDuel. He was there in four straight games before his most recent stinker. Um, so De'Aaron Fox is going to be a three for me on FanDuel. And then Willie Cauley-Stein, 6,900 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. You need 35. Um, can get there. Not super worried about Portland. Cauley-Stein. I'm just going to say a straight three. And then if you're interested in Zebo on DK, he's a four. Finally, to look at the Blazers. Blazers 107.25 implied total is eighth. Um, they are uh, they've got a pretty good matchup here against the Kings, so it's worth a, a decent look. I prefer well, let's look into it a little bit more. 9,000 for Lillard, 8,800 on DK. We're looking 45. Um, he said two games in the 50s in the past two weeks, but really hasn't gone off. You would think um, this would be a great spot for him. Uh, Kings give up more threes than anybody else in the league. Um, obviously, that fits Dame and McCollum and Aminu better than anybody. So, um, I really like Dame here. I'm going to say that he's a two. I think this could be the, the breakout game for Dame. Same for CJ. Um, depending on how your pieces fit, he's 7,200 on FanDuel, 7,300 on DK. So, you're looking like 36. Um, he's been down his past four games. But, again, you would think the Kings could be the cure for what ails him. Apparently, I just put him in tier six. I'm going to say that CJ is just a three, though. Um... Sacramento does cut off the mid-range a little bit, and uh, CJ tends to live there a little bit more. Al Farouk Aminu is 5,500 on FanDuel, 5,500 on DK. Game fits him like a glove. Been playing better as of late. Uh, over 30 in his last two, 26 as well, which would be right at value. Um, he's a really good play on FanDuel. Just a three, but I'm a little bit more focused on him. There's only so much upside in an Aminu game. It doesn't do enough. Uh, but the whole game itself fits him really well. And then uh, I feel the same sort of way about Nurkic. Um, he's just a straight three for me. 
needs uh, 33 for value. Had a monster game last night, 53 points. But had a 33-pointer and a 37-pointer and a 43-pointer in this last two-week stretch. Could be good for him. Um, probably not going to look at Napier or Turner or Ed Davis. So that's everything. Let's throw this into the optimizer and see what gets spit out. That was the message from my uh, my guy saying, "Hey, if you uh, get 50 from Westbrook, you finish second. Yeah, well aware. <laughs> Well aware. All right, what do we get here? This should be fun. We'll be live tonight, so tune in at 6. No live streams over the weekend. Um, probably not going live on Monday either, as Monday is my birthday. So we shall see. Yeah, that makes sense. A lot of Jeff Green, a lot of Lou Will. So those would be my first two spots. I would go Green, I would go Lou Will. By default, I almost have to go to LeBron. Um, I think James Johnson and Miritich are both a good spot, but if I take James Johnson, Miritich falls off the board. I would probably want to limit my calves a little bit. Oh, I already have Jeff Green. That makes sense. Um, yeah, I would, I would rather have Jeff Green than Miritich, so that's fine. I should probably take Miritich over James Johnson. And then at small forward, it would be, can I get Butler still? Nope, Chetty, Wilson, Chandler, or Ingles. So I would say Ingles. So something in this area would be good. It's probably gonna be too many calves, but a lot of value out there tonight. And then at DK, Those projections loaded. Let's set that just for sake of argument to a max of three guys per team. That's weird. Expected uh, higher exposures. <sighs> so Jeff Green for sure. Butler, Towns, Lillard, Miritich, Thompson, Calderon. Okay, so Miritich would be next. I guess Calderon. No real sign of Butler or Towns, which is kind of interesting. I guess Butler is there. So we'd be looking at Ish, Chetty, Green, Miritich, Drummond, Calderon, Butler, Capella. I could entertain something like that, but I think that I would want to look a little bit different direction. Going to end up with a lot of calves one way or the other. No LeBron James in any lineups in my top 50, which is nuts. But that's what we got. That is it for me, guys. I will see you tonight for Live Before Lock at 6. Uh, like and subscribe. Um, check me out on Twitter or Reddit. But I will uh, see you guys in a couple hours. Bye-bye.